This video is an introduction to higher order homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. I'm going to explain what approach we're going to take to solve these kind of equations, but we're not going to do any examples right now. So let me show how homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients look like in general form. So here I have it. The right hand side is zero. That makes it homogeneous. And the left hand side, um, we can see y and its derivatives, right? With the constant coefficients, so a sub n, a sub n minus one, and so on and so forth. These are the constants. I'm going to make that note. Just some kind of real numbers. Constants. So we already learned how to solve second order homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients, you know, this, this part. And approach that we take to solve higher order homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients is, is similar. So we're going to obtain the corresponding nth degree polynomial equation. So here I have that written in general. So we can see that, well, here I have the variable is m, and m is raised to power m, I'm sorry, to power n, m is raised to power n minus 1, and so on and so forth, down to the power 0. So as we can see, degree of this polynomial corresponds to the degree of this differential equation. And the same, exact same coefficients are being used, right? So these are the same constants that, that we're using. So what do we know about nth degree polynomial equations? So we need to bring back our memories from college algebra course. So there are a couple of facts that I wrote down that, that's going to be important to refresh. So the first one um, is the following. Well, the roots of this polynomial equation will be m1, m2, m3, up to m sub n. So that indicates that and reminds us that the number of roots for polynomial equation um, is the same as the degree of the equation. So if I have, let's say, polynomial equation of degree 5, it means that it's going to have 5 roots. If I have quadratic equation, so how many roots does quadratic equation have? Well, we know it's 2, right? So the degree of the equation tells us how many roots it's going to have, and that's part of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, but we need to keep in mind that those roots can be different. Uh, so we have different types of roots and they occur in many different combinations. So we can have real roots, meaning real numbers. Um, there could be complex roots, which means that they're complex numbers. And um, we also can have repeated roots. So it means that root can happen a few times. Let's say I can have root 5, how that happens occurs three times. So it's repeated. Uh, root and we'll say its multiplicity is 3 if it repeats 3 times or we can have non-repeated roots right it only happens once um, so we need to keep that in mind and also the last fact that is going to be important to remember that complex roots complex numbers they always appear in um, conjugate pairs right so if I have a complex root negative square root of 2 plus 3y 3i it's guaranteed that that same equation is going to have root negative square root of 2 minus 3i. That's our complex conjugates. They always come in pairs when we, uh, when they're roots of the equation. So let's say we obtained this kind of nth degree polynomial equation for our given um, differential equation and we were able to solve that. It means that we were able to find its roots. Then how do we use them to obtain solution for differential equation. Well, for that, we can look at the following table. Um, it might look a little bit overwhelming, but um, we only need technically one part of it. So the left hand side of this table, so this side, it describes second order homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. And that's something that we already know. <clears throat> Let me remind you that, well, there are different cases. So for second order uh, differential, uh, differential equation with constant co uh, coefficients, we use auxiliary or characteristic equation that, that is a polynomial, second degree polynomial equation, right? Which, you know, is easy to solve, it's quadratic equation. And 
the case one is when that equation produces two real distinct roots. That means that there are different numbers and there are real numbers. In this case, um, the general solution to differential equation looks like this. Well, let me remind you that, first of all, C1 and C2 are just arbitrary uh, constants, right? Parameters. However, e to the power m1x and e to the power m2x, where m1 and m2 are roots of this quadratic equation. These are two linearly independent solutions of this differential equation. So these are linearly independent solutions of this differential equation. Remember, if we find linearly independent solutions to the equation, then general solution is being formed this way, right? We just put arbitrary constants in front. And so in other words, we create a linear combination out of those linearly independent solutions. Next one, we have repeated roots for that quadratic equation. So m1 is the same as m2. This is how general solution to the differential equation or second order differential equation looks like. Well, here, those two are linearly independent solutions. So they are e to the power m1x and x times e to the power m1x, right? We're just reusing m1 since it's exactly the same as m2. So these are two linearly independent solutions. That we put in a linear combination um, to obtain general solution. And then finally, when we have conjugate uh, when we have complex solutions, so it means that, again, they come in pairs, so both of them are complex roots, right? Alpha plus or minus I beta. Then there are different forms how we can write general solution. Um, the bottom two are the most popular, but what I want to point out is that, again, that part, it's like everything except the constants. So these two are, again, linearly independent solutions to that differential um, equation, um, and we use them to form a general solution. So I'm talking about all that so that we can make connection now to the high-order uh, homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. So once we find solutions for the or roots of the corresponding nth degree polynomial equation, so it's not going to be quadratic anymore, it's going to be a third degree or fourth degree or fifth degree um, polynomial equation. So once we find all the roots, three, four, or five, whatever it is, um, we'll use them to obtain linearly independent solutions of, of the differential equation. And then those linearly independent solutions can be used to form a general solution by just simply putting arbitrary constants in front of each. And this table provides some kind of structure to types of linearly independent solutions that you get de depending on types of types of roots. Again, keep in mind that for a quadratic equation, it's either both real roots or repeated roots, repeated real roots, or two complex roots, which are conjugates, right? So no other cases. Now, however, when we solve n's degree polynomial equation, we already said um, how roots occur in many combinations. So it means that it's technically not really case one, case two, and case three, but kind of like the mixture of those steps. Uh, but I, I'm still separating by types of roots. So let's say the nth order, nth degree polynomial equation has so many real roots. So for, uh, and those roots are m1, m2, m3, m4, you know, up to whatever the number is. Well then, linearly corresponding, clearly independent solutions to the differential equation will have this form, e to the power first real root times x. Um, if you have another real root, root, it means that you're going to have another linearly independent solution and it's going to have that form. And I mean, they all have the same form. You just put each real root, each distinct real root in the power right here as the coefficient of x. Right, so um, you obtain those uh, linearly independent solutions. What el what if you have repeated real roots, or actually repeated conjugate roots? It can also happen that we have repeated conjugate roots. How do you obtain linearly independent solutions in that case? Well, let's say is uh, let's say root m one is repeated and it repeats uh, three times. 
Well, if it, repeat, re, if it repeats three times, it's going to produce three linearly independent solutions to the differential equation. And they will be e to the power that root times x. Next, it's going to be x times e to the power that root times x. Then it's going to be x squared uh, times e to the power m1x. So notice how you start with just e to the power m1x, but then you have another factor, which is x, and you increase the power. So how far do you go? Well, if multiplicity of that root is k, it means that it repeats k times, five times, three times, two times, then you're going to go up to the power of x that's one less. So if multiplicity of root is five, it repeats five times. It means that it will produce five linearly independent solutions, but it, it will go to power four, right? Because the first solution is not going to have x at all. So it's like x to the power zero, x to the power one, two, three, and four. That's how you'll obtain five linearly independent solutions. Um, when you have complex roots, it's going to be also similar, uh, complex repeated roots. That will be um, a similar idea. So first of all, when we have complex roots, and since they come um, in conjugate, conjugate pairs, they will always produce, each pair will produce those two linearly independent solutions. Um, one with cosine and one with sine. But what if that conjugate pair repeats? It has multiplicity k, it repeats several times um, as, that, as the root. Then the way we're going to form linearly independent solutions will be somewhat similar to what we just talked about. So I will have to um, use factor of x in the front that goes up to the power that's one less than multiplicity of that complex uh, complex root. And um, there, I have two rows here because again, when I, I have repeated complex root, it means that I also have its conjugate and it repeats the same number of times. So multiplicity will be exactly the same. So, so for repeated conjugate roots of multiplicity k, we're going to produce twice more uh, number of linearly independent solutions. Um, half of them will be with cosine and half of them will be so with sine. And finally, let's talk about when you have uh, pairs of conjugate complex roots, and it could be more than one pair of conjugate roots. So since they come in pairs, you will always have an even number of complex roots, two or four or six or eight and so on, so on and so forth. Um, let's say we have two pairs of conjugate complex roots. Well, it means that one pair will produce those two linearly independent solutions, right? One with cosine and one with sine. And the second pair of um, complex conjugate roots will produce, you know, another pair of linearly independent solutions that will have same form, just different, uh, different coefficients here that come from that second pair of conjugate roots. And then and so forth, so on and so forth, right? So if you have a more um, conjugate pairs of complex roots, you know, you will have more linear independent solutions like that. And um, we're pretty much done here. So idea is that since as degree polynomial equation can have many combinations of, of roots, real, complex, repeated, not repeated, it means that you may have, you may end up with linear independent solutions from, I don't know, like of each kind. And once you obtain all of them, the final answer or to obtain general solution, general solution to the differential equation, you'll just have to create a linear combination of those linearly independent solutions and simply putting constants in front of them. So you'll put C1 first solution plus C2 times second solution plus C3 plus C2. You're going to have as many terms in the general solution of the differential equation as the order of that, um, of that equation.